So today, let's talk a little bit about metal jigs. All right, so here's some pretty old school metal lures. Listen, I learned how to fish on diamond jigs uh, for striped bass and cod, and these are kind of like, the, I call them the OGs, right? The A17s, right? Some are more casting, some more jigging, etc. So if you're a fan of continuity, you probably saw a video about a week ago uh, where I used this little crippled herring and caught that big black drum. The next thing I did was obviously buy as many crippled herrings as I could find, and I got myself a couple dozen. But to follow up on another thing after the black drum, um, my buddy Alex uh, works with the Real Seed. Uh, they carry a pretty large selection of Nomad jigs. And I told them I do a lot of jigging here within that 40, 50 foot range. And uh, basically diversity is kind of the thing I mentioned. There's a lot of different fish to catch. Uh, so he sent me a box of jigs. And at first, uh, these are slow pitch jigs, right? And that kind of refers to the jigging method. And as being a kayak angler or near shore or inshore angler, um, I don't have access to deep water. I don't really have access to many tunas. So typically I jig one ounces, three quarters of an ounce, half ounce stuff. So my initial impression of this stuff when I got these slow pitch jigs in the mail, uh, they range from 40 grams to about 60 grams. I was like, this stuff's way too heavy. I uh, ended up tipping them with a salted squid. Uh, it was more of a confidence thing. It was my first time taking these sorts of jigs out and I tried to not pound bottom with them because of uh, how heavy they were. And I kind of, I was kind of a little paranoid that I was going to be blowing up sand everywhere with the weight of these. So I was fishing these mostly, uh, as soon as I hit bottom, I'd take a crank up and just uh, squitting them or slow lifting them off the bottom. And uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting. You'll see what I end up catching on them uh, to see some speckled trout uh, on the ocean beaches. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, if I went with just the regular old small profile here um, that it would typically jig, black sea bass would be my problem, right? There's a load of little black sea bass here on the ocean all winter. And if I decided to jig soft plastics on this day, we had a big problem with bluefish. So these kind of cut through the small bluefish really effectively. This might be a decent trick uh, to work on the inshore stuff. So pretty cool stuff. This is a tricky one because we're not catching anything good. Finally. That's something. All right, yeah, that's something interesting, whatever that is. Bluefish? Yo, you won't believe what I just caught. The 60 foot speckled trout, baby. <laughs> I ain't shitting you. I always know there's a couple fish that make it out here. That's a keeper trout, we could keep him, but. And you. <laughs> I knew it. What's that? That's kind of hilarious. So we caught a speckled trout today in 50 feet of water. It's happened to me before. And I'm just using this slow pitch jig. I could probably take this squid off of it, but I was wondering if it might be some porgies and stuff out here, but uh, we're gonna keep working it. Not a big one, but still was, you know. Yeah, it's just the, the fact that it happens. It's like, you almost have to. Yep, he's gonna get eaten by a shark anyway out here. I don't know what this is. It's something different. It's pretty big. Uh, late season, I know what this is. Not a doormat, but a good fish, man. A little, a little further offshore. Huh? Some nice flounder. Oh, oh man, season's closed, but that's a nice fish, man. On that slow pitch jig, man. I'm talking a solid 22, 23 incher. All right, it's a southern flounder. We're on a speckled trout and a flounder. 
Thanksgiving week in the ocean. It's a very interesting day. We have not had a keeper sea bass yet, which is discouraging. That's something. Another sea bass? I don't know. This one is. <laughs> you know it. Oh, another speck. This is ve very unusual to catch speckled trout in deep water like this. I mean, it happens. You know what happens? They probably get misplaced through a storm, something like that. Uh, it's probably a school of all the same size fish, but like I said, you might, you never know when it comes to this ocean fishing. To see a school of some big ones wouldn't be really that out of the question even. All right, so it's kind of like a mid-morning update. It's been slow. Uh, two speckled trout and a really, really nice flounder on the metal jakes. Tipping it with the uh, salted squid. We just got a couple bag box of frozen squid last night and just dumped a bag of salt on it so rock salt so let me see i don't have a working unit so i'm kind of relying on intuition and past experience here but let's see hopefully you get a couple more fish yeah, i think we finally lost our first jig here yeah we lost one jig just now it's all right let's see what else we can catch problem bouncing around on this stuff, especially if you don't know it like I don't. Might be the octopus. Oh, that's a big one, man. All right, screw it. Octopus. I got got one of my favorite eats right here. It certainly is. I'm just gonna dispatch this guy quickly. Um, if you go right underneath the eyes with a knife or scissors, that's usually how I do it. In between the eyes here, that's where his brain is. So we're not gonna do that on camera. Well, I had a camera off and I was goofing around, so I just landed, put this slow pitch jig, it's a 40 gram one, this one's an awesome profile, and we just got a, another trout, probably 18, 19, a little bigger one. Makes me wonder how deep these specks actually go. It does make me kind of scratch my head, maybe should be wreck, fi wreck fishing for specks a lot more. And what are we, two miles off the beach, fishing, you know, one of the more popular areas. That makes for three specks, so... You know what I'm saying? That's a good fish. There you go. Uh, gulf flounder. Non threatened one. Gulf? Yeah, it's a gulf one. Nice one, too. Slow pitch jigs, baby. That's a nice flounder. Not too sim I would think we would have been done with these guys by now. That's a gulf flounder, pretty decent one. Three oscillated spots, yeah. Gulf. He's not threatened. I'm having a pretty good time fishing these slow pitch jigs. Kind of atrocious the way I'm fishing them, but uh, we're on two flounder now. Closed season flounder, unfortunately, and um, three speckled trout. Should have netted that last one, but instead of the way we handled it, and uh, yeah. There's a lot of things like that. You know? It's true. It's like 
fish that just aren't even a little bit thick. Spec. The novelty of doing what I'm doing is just awesome to me. That's kind of cool. Catch, catching specs on two ounce jigs. <laughs> They like these slow pitch jigs, man. This style of jig definitely appeals to the trout. Thanksgiving trout. Damn, I would've had my limit. You'd assume if they were out here, you'd get the biggest ones, but I guess not. You know, the squid, I don't know if that's necessary. I honestly put squid on these jigs because of, uh, I, I thought we would see porgies and grunts and stuff like that. Um, I think it just brought in more sea bass. So, like for ocean speckled trout jigging, where we fish, probably fish those naked in the future. Speckled trout, I mean, I've caught them out here before, but this is the first time I had numbers. Um, I'm, not, I'm not shitting on Aaron, but Aaron was fishing a couple different methods, tried and true, just jigging gulps, jigging, uh, fishing with crabs, fishing with bait. Um, no specs for him and four over the rail for me. So, well, if one we could have netted. But uh, it's interesting, I, you know, that whole thing to see, to see how that plays out. Um, they're not huge. I mean, I think we're, we're all like 15, biggest trout's probably 18, so nothing big really. But um, just interesting to see how to do all that stuff. Uh, it was kind of cool. I wonder how big that school actually was down there. <laughs> because honestly, all I've got is a blue screen, yay. Um, just sucks, but uh, kind of cool stuff. So, um, one more spot, and we're gonna call it. There you go. Crab. Something good. Feels like a tog. On the crab, though. It is a tog. No yep. Not bad. Eighteen, nineteen inch tongue, something like that. Oh. Not a bad one. Oh, look at that yellow color on them. All right, so there you have it. Um, yeah, that's uh, kind of cool. Um, a little bit different. Uh, that doesn't happen too often. We, you might have seen me catch a lot of weak fish on the ocean in the last two years, but speckled trout doesn't, doesn't happen as often. And like I said, I have caught a couple. Something about this presentation uh, certainly gave us the opportunity to catch what I would think was the needle in the haystack. I think these profiles were probably the ticket for that. So that was kind of cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to check out these jigs, I'll have an affiliate link in the video's description. Um, so uh, a little new trick for myself.